What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about using JHS Power Bar and some of its functions to quickly add vegetation inside of your SketchUp models. Um, before we get started I want to take a second and thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Rachel, Sergio Fedorov, John Lucinius, David Robertson, Cyril Perrier, Kishore Prajapati, Matt, and Nathan Kruger. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So this week, my patrons voted and they selected a new JHS Power Bar tutorial as the tutorial of the week. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So JHS Power Bar is a unique extension in that it's a collection of different tools by great extension authors. So you've got tools in here by like Christina Inneroth and Didier Burr and Pixaro. Um, a lot of the great um, extension creators have extensions included inside of this um, of this extension. Tig's in here as well. So just the sheer number of tools contained inside this extension is why I included this extension in my architecture extensions guide. It just has a ton of different tools that you can use specifically for architecture as well as for other things as well. So if you want the link for this extension, you can find that link inside of the architecture extensions guide that I've put together at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. What we're gonna do in this tutorial is we're gonna use a few of the tools in here to place trees inside of our model. And one of the difficult things about working with trees inside of SketchUp is a lot of the time they can be very high polygon and they can definitely negatively affect your performance. And so what we wanna do in this situation is we wanna use the tools in here to both place those and also set them up in a way where they're not gonna slow down your SketchUp model. So this is a 3D warehouse model that I've downloaded and you can find this by searching for container by I'm not sure if this is NGO or Nego. I'm, I can't pronounce this quite properly, but it's NGO the man. So you can find this by searching for this on the 3D warehouse. And so what I've done is I've gone through and I've deleted out the trees that were contained inside of that so we can use this uh, model. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna extend out the earthwork just a bit. And so in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this plane that the earthwork is made up of, and I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to make a copy across here. So just select this, tap the M key, and then um, tap the control key to put this into copy mode. And then I'm gonna create a copy that's across here. And part of the problem right now is if I try to line these up, so if I select this edge and try to line it up with this one, you see that there's a gap. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the scale tool to flip this. So I'm just holding the control key while I do this so that I can flip this so that these edges can align properly. So I'm just gonna take this corner, I'm just gonna move this down and this is what that's going to look like. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing on the front. So I'm gonna move this across, I'm gonna flip it. And then I'm gonna align these corners so that we can kind of extend our ground out a little bit more. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all three of these and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make them a group or I'm gonna double click in here and then I'm gonna explode each one of these individually so that we have just one big sandbox in here. And then I can use sandbox tools to come in here and smooth this down. So we'll go ahead and make our radius on this something like 50 feet. And I'm just gonna move all this down so that my terrain kind of continues. You can see how I can use this to quickly kind of continue my hill downward a little bit. And so you could kind of smooth out this hump um, and then you could make the smooth tool just a little bit smaller just to kind of just to kind of give us a continuation of this terrain a little bit. So just so we have a little bit bigger space to work with right here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna add trees and vegetation, specifically trees for this tutorial, to this surface that we've created using the, uh, using the Smooth tool. And so one way to do that would be if you wanted to go into the 3D warehouse and just look for a tree. Like um, for this tutorial, we could use this pine tree from SketchUp if we wanted to. We could also use a higher poly tree. I'm probably gonna do a little bit of both actually, but we could 
come in here and we could just download this into our model and then just drop this in here and then just kind of place this along the terrain just like this. So there's one, that's one way that we could do this is we could come in here and we could just manually create a bunch of these this way. Um, the problem is this can get a little bit tricky with trying to get them all aligned with the ground and everything else. It can just be a little bit more time consuming than what we want. So I'm just going to undo that. And what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use a tool inside of the JHS power bar called drop at intersection. And so what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to create a plane up above like this so we can just draw a line up to make sure that our corner is above this and then we can draw a rectangle and we can lock it to the blue axis by tapping the up arrow key so something like this that covers about the same ground that covers about the same ground that our terrain covers and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find a point where this house kind of starts and stops and I'm just gonna draw a line up just as kind of an indicator to me of um, hey don't place any trees in this location so I'm just gonna draw a couple lines up through here and just I'm blocking out a space where I don't want to drop any trees and so the reason that we're doing this is we're going to take these trees and instead of trying to place them all on the terrain like this we can just come in here and we can just select them and we can start making copies using the move tool in copy mode so you can see how I can kind of copy these trees and place them in a way that I would like for them to be on the ground below so I can make a copy here and it doesn't really matter if they're on this face or not it just matters that they're above the plane that's down below you can see how these are getting a little bit lower as I do this so the other thing you could do is you could click on this face somewhere and use the move tool in copy mode to make copies like this and so you can see what I'm doing is I'm just placing these randomly um, in kind of a plan view above where my terrain is down below. And then now I'm just gonna triple click on this face and I'm gonna right click to hide it because I don't really need it anymore. And so what I have right now is I have a number of different trees that are kind of up in the air right here. Well, all we need to do now is just select them all like this and you can see I've kind of randomly placed them and then you can just click on this tool right here for drop at intersection so what that's gonna do is that's gonna take all of these trees and it's gonna drop them straight down um, until they intersect with this face so it's very similar to drop GC this may actually be the same as drop GC I'm not hundred percent sure on that one but you can see how I'm easily able to add these trees in here kind of randomly and then place them along my terrain and so that's not necessarily good enough for me because they they look very uniform right now so they're all exactly the same size they're not very organic like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these trees we're gonna select them and then we're gonna use another tool inside of JHS power bar called random scale and rotate by the CAD father and so what that extension does is that'll randomly rotate and scale these trees inside of our model. And so there's two different ways you can do this. You can just click on this button if you want to, and that'll randomly scale and rotate these trees um, just like this. So you can see how they got rotated in here. They got scaled a little bit, but overall they stayed kind of the same general size. And so what we can do instead is without anything selected, if we click on this tool like this, you can see how this gives us the option down here to tap the Alt key to get into our settings. So where before we had a max scale of 0.79 and we had a max or we had a minimum scale of 0.79 and a maximum scale of 1.18. That means that the minimum that this would scale this would be to 0.79 of its current size. The maximum scale would be 1.18 of its current size. So if you wanted to, you could adjust this to be 0.5 and 1.5 or something like that. And so that'll allow us to scale these a little bit more. And you can also set how these are pivoted. And so if they're pivoted by the center point or the axis, as well as if they're scaled by the axis or the center point. But we're gonna go ahead and leave these as is and click okay. Well now, if we come in here and run this again, so if we just select all these trees, 
you can see how this scales these randomly a lot more. And so one thing about this is when it scales these, it may be better to scale them before you drop them. So you can see how what this did is when this scaled them, it moved them, it moved a couple of them down a little bit, specifically this one. So one thing you might want to consider if you do this and a whole bunch of these go down through your terrain is you might just want to move them back up and then just drop them again like this, just to make sure that they're not down through your terrain. But you can see how this is a really easy way to randomly scale and rotate your trees to get a little bit more natural feel for the way your trees would look in real life. And so the one issue I have with these SketchUp trees is they're not very realistic. They're just like a number of different edges in here. And so um, let's say, for example, that you wanted to come in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to edit and I'm going to unhide my plane that I had up here. And I'm going to take all of these SketchUp trees just for right now and I'm going to put them in a group and I'm going to hide them. Let's say that we wanted to bring in some higher polygon trees from the 3D warehouse. So it's it's very simple, right, when you're bringing in trees from SketchUp that are really lightweight because they don't slow down your model. But let's say we wanted to bring in a different kind of a pine tree. So I'm just going to search for pine tree in the warehouse. I'm going to sort by popularity and we'll go ahead and we'll bring in one of the trees that's going to be a little bit heavier. So maybe we'll bring in like uh, this pine tree right here from CG World. So I've seen this tree in here before. It doesn't have a big size but it has a lot of polygons. And so what happens is if we click on this and we download this into our model it just kind of runs slow it's one of those trees that uh, you can see how I have to rotate and it takes a while to render all of the different needles and that just gets worse and worse the more of these that you add in here right so you need to make sure when you're doing something like this that you've turned off profiles and other things like that and just the more of these trees that are in here the worse your performance gets because it's just more stuff that um, SketchUp needs to render. Well, the nice thing about the nice thing about JHS Power Bar is it has another tool in here called Proxify. And so what Proxify does is Proxify will take a heavy shape like this one. So if I click on this, right? and I click on the button for Proxify, you can see how this leaves a shape in here, but it hides the geometry of this tree. So now I could come in here and I could create a bunch of different copies of this, of the tree, and it's not currently slowing down the performance of my model. And so now if I wanted to deproxify this, you could just click on this again and it would deproxify your tree. So what that means is while you're working and rotating and flying around, you can make these into proxies. When you're done with this, you can click on this and it'll swap that tree geometry back in. And so probably the best way for us to use this is what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this tree and I'm going to delete it. We're going to do the same thing we did before where we're going to place these trees up on this plane. So we're going to move this straight up and down and this is probably going to be close enough but instead of doing what we did before where we took this uh, full geometry and made copies of it, we'll just go ahead and click on it and click the Proxify tool in order to make a proxy and then we can just use the Move tool in Copy mode to quickly move the proxies around in here. So you can see how I'm able to just create a whole bunch of different copies of the proxy just like this just by clicking on this face. So I can randomly place all of these in here and you could even randomly scale and rotate these if you wanted to while they were up above. So I could take all of these proxies and probably what we need to do is triple click on this face again and right click on it and hide it. But we could go ahead and we could take this and we could randomly scale and rotate these at, while they're still proxies. So you can see how these all got scaled and rotated. Well now, you could go ahead and you could bring your trees back just by clicking on this button right here by um, deproxifying them now or you could go ahead and you could drop these using drop at intersection down below so you're able to take these and place these and do everything else with these um, and kind of put them in place while they're still in proxy mode meaning you can use these higher polygon trees without really slowing down your performance and then once you're done you could kind of go ahead and set your camera up the way that you want it and then you could click on this button again to deproxify these components. So you can use this to quickly proxify these 
fly around and adjust your camera and then deproxify them to bring them back into your model with that higher polygon geometry. So that lets you work with these higher polygon trees inside of SketchUp um, while still not having your performance affected so poorly that you can't work inside your model anymore. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you used this workflow before? What's your favorite thing in JHS Power Bar? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.